I'm Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Crates Desert Museum Palo Verde step-by-step -step instructional video. In this video I'll be showing you how to paint the Desert Museum Palo Verde by using the Nature Sketch Crates step-by-step -step painting instructions. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. First, collect all your materials and make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, and have fun. Don't worry too much if you think you may have made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. First, you wanna tape the transfer image to the back of the watercolor paper. And make sure you don't cover up any lines you plan to transfer. So if you wanna transfer the whole punch lines, don't cover those up with your tape, or the common name and scientific name, don't cover those up with the tape. You can put the tape wherever you like, just as long as it is attached to the back. And then take your graphite transfer paper. As you can see, I've used this before, and you can use these sheets over and over and over. Place it dark side down, light side up, in between your transfer image and your watercolor paper. And then gently press down flat. And then you can get started. So choose any spot, it doesn't matter. And what you'll wanna do is just trace right over all the lines to transfer them. And first go ahead and transfer one little spot. Gently hold it down when you check the line by picking up both the transfer image and the graphite transfer paper and looking at how dark that line transfers. You wanna make sure it's actually transferring and um, that you're pressing hard enough. So uh, this is about right right here. So you wanna be able to see it. You don't want it to be super dark, but you wanna be able to see it when you're done adding the paint so that you can redraw the lines at the end. And so go ahead and just go throughout and trace over all of those lines to transfer them. This is meant to be really relaxing so put on a podcast, some music, an audiobook, and just take your time transferring over those lines. And if you get interrupted at any point, don't worry, you can come back to it at any time. You don't have to complete this in one sitting. You don't have to complete even this painting in one sitting. And if you don't draw over these lines, perfectly, it's not a perfect tracing, don't worry about it. It's going to be imperfectly perfect and unique to you. This is just a sketch. Just a nice relaxing practice creating this image. So just go throughout and trace over all the lines to transfer them. When you transferred all the lines, go ahead and lift up the transfer image and the graphite transfer paper and kind of flip it up and down like a flip book to check to see if you missed any lines. And what I do is I just move my eye throughout to see each time I flip it up. So flip it up once, I'll look in this area, flip up next time, I'll look in this area, and so on until I've looked at the whole thing. And if you miss any lines, that's okay. They can always be drawn in later. But it's helpful to catch them at this step. It makes it a little simpler. And then when you're done, go ahead and remove the graphite transfer paper, save it for future use and then gently remove the tape from the back of the watercolor paper. Remove the tape from the transfer image. This one retained quite a bit of paper, so I'm gonna throw it away or probably gonna compost it. Um, you can do whatever works best for you. And then I'll use this transfer image to protect my painting while I am creating it. Lastly, take your kneaded eraser 
and knead it into a nice light gray spot. And that's a clean spot so it won't leave any gray uh, pencil marks on your paper. And then you can just kind of rub it over any graphite that was transferred. Sometimes it comes off, sometimes it doesn't. And you can use your other pencil too if it's being really stubborn. And if there's a, sometimes it's hard to get it off at all. So I'll just leave it there. It's just a sketch, it's not a big deal. You can lighten lines too by just kind of dabbing over an area and it'll just pick up some of that pencil or the graphite. And now I'm going to move on to step two. Step two, paint in Palo Verde Yellow. So first you want to mix the Palo Verde Yellow. It'll be 21 drops of the 1H Hansa Yellow Light and shake that up. You want to make sure any pigment that has settled is well mixed within the bottle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And then one drop of the 26H Chrome Yellow. Go ahead and add a little bit of water to that. If you're using a traditional brush, you can just add it with your brush, picking up a little water from wherever you're keeping your water onto your brush and then into your palette. Um, if you're using the water brush, go ahead and just gently squeeze on it to release some water and mix that up. Dab it off onto your towel and then test it on your test paper. And that looks like that drier color, which is the more concentrated color. So it has more paint pigment in it in your palette. I'm gonna clean off the brush, pick up a little bit, and then take it to the side, adding more water, and then test it out on my paper after dabbing it off on my towel. And that looks like that wetter, lighter color. So I'm gonna go ahead and dab it on my towel and then go ahead and apply it to the entire image. So all of the Palo Verde flower parts here, including the buds and leaves, just the entire thing. I'm just gonna fill it all in. And this is a lot like using a pen or a marker. You just have to Get a little bit more paint every time you need it as the color runs out but just start in one area and then move to the next just kind of filling it in whatever technique you use for coloring with pens or crayons or markers it's the same kind of thing so if you like to do the outside and then fill it in you can do that if you like to move from just one side to the other you can do that I like to work from one space to the next. Sometimes I like to outline, sometimes I just fill it in. Make sure you dab your brush off onto your towel after you pick up the paint from your palette. This helps control the amount of paint and water going to your paper. You don't want a bunch of water, go actual water going onto your paper. And the water brush will release a little bit of that as well. You just want it to be enough so that it moves. We get outside of the lines, that's fine. This is just a sketch. And it makes it just unique and imperfectly perfect. And clean off your brush, let this dry, and move on to step three. Step three, paint in Palo Verde Green. And so you wanna make sure it's dry, of course, and you can do that by just kind of dabbing the area with your finger. You don't wanna rub it over, because then it'll smear the paint if it's wet. But you can just dab it and you can see that it's dry. And so we'll mix some Palo Verde Green. So that will be eight drops of the 1H Hansa Yellow Light. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one drop of the Payne's Gray 22H. And 
go ahead and mix that up. Releasing a little bit of water again, adding a little bit of water to that, and then dab it on your towel and test it out. Looks like the right color to me. And clean off my brush, take a little bit, and then bring it to the side, adding a bunch of water, and then testing it out again. It looks good. And then clean my brush off. I'm gonna take that color, the light, less concentrated, wetter, lighter color, pick it up on my brush, dab it on my towel a little bit, and then I'm gonna add it to the buds, just like I see in step three's image. And right here I have a little bit too much water, so I'll just dab it on my towel. And then continue. And then I'm going to dab my brush off, pick up a little bit of the drier, darker color. These are dry as well. I'm going to dab it off on my towel and then I'm going to add it just over all of these pinne, sure the little leaflets and stems. Pick up more paint, dab it on your towel before applying it back to your painting. You'll know you'll need more paint when it starts to get really light, so the pigment's running out. You don't have an, any more in your brush. And when you have all of those filled in, go ahead and clean up your brush. Let this dry and move on to step four. Step four, paint in Palo Verde orange and yellow. First, mix the Palo Verde orange with three drops of the 26H chrome yellow and one drop of the 33H raw umber. Mix it up, adding a little bit of water like before. Dab it off on your towel, test it out, looks good. Clean off your brush, pick up a little bit more, and then add it to the side with lots of water. And then test it out, looks like the right color to me. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more, dab it on my towel, and then go ahead and add it to the stamen like you see in step four's image. So I like to start with each end, the anther, and then go down the filament. Gives me a nice starting point. And if you need a finer tip on your brush, you can pick up your paint and then just kind of roll your brush gently and that will create a little bit of a finer tip at the end. And don't worry too much about being exact. This is just a sketch. So wherever those lines are for those filaments and the anthers, just add them in, but don't be too worried about getting them exactly right. And at any point you can go back and add more to this. I realize I forgot to add the little green right here. So if you miss something, you can always go back and add it. Just like that, just make sure it's dry where you're adding the paint. I'm gonna clean up my brush and then I'm gonna add the Palo Verde yellow. I'm gonna use this dry concentrated color, dab it off on my towel, and then I'm just gonna add it to here in the bud and the petals, some line motion and sparingly to these petals as well. And I'm gonna start left to right so I don't smudge it with my hand. It's gonna kind of add some to the outlines and to the lines. And make sure that some of that lighter yellow color still shows through. And just let those lines that are on the petals be your guide and pick up paint whenever you need it. And 
you can refer to your final reference image for placement and also your step four image. And feel free to be creative and add it where you want to see it. it. Does not need to be exactly like the reference image. This is your painting. So feel free to make it your own. And clean off your brush. Let this dry and move on to step five. Step five, paint in Palo Verde Red. So first, of course, you're gonna to need to mix the Palo Verde Red and take the four drops of the 27H Vermilion Hue. One, two, three, four. Three drops of the 33H Raw Umber. And one drop of the 26H Chrome Yellow. Go ahead and mix that up by adding a little bit of water and then dab it off on your towel and test it out on your little test paper. It looks right to me. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more and then roll the tip to make sure I have a fine tip for these little spots on the flowers and then add it to the flower petals. And again, this does not need to be exact. Just add it in and just dab it in those little dots and they can be pretty random and just use those transfer lines as a guide. If you want a couple extra dots going in, that's fine too. This is your sketch, and I'd love for you to make it your own. Every time I paint, my paintings turn out just a little bit different. I'm sure you'll find the same with yours, just based on mood. And now that I added those, I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry and move on to step six. Step six, paint in Palo Verde Yellow Green and Rust. So mix the Palo Verde Yellow Green using 13 drops of the 1H Hansa Yellow Light. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And one drop of the 22H Payne's Gray. Mix that up with a little bit of water. Dab it off on your towel and test it out on your paper. And then clean off your brush. Pick up a little bit more. Dab it off and then add it to the buds and the bud stems. So again, refer to step six's image and your final reference image for placement. And uh, just like before, feel free to be creative and don't worry too much about getting it exact. Just place it in the same general areas or something similar. And then clean off your brush and then mix the Palo Verde Rust. So take five drops of the 26H Chrome Yellow. One, two, three, four, five. And one drop of the 33H Raw Umber. Mix that up. Adding a little bit of water in your palette. Dab it off on your towel and test it out. Looks good to me. I'm gonna pick some more up, dab it off on my towel, and then I'm just gonna add that sparingly to the stamen. Um, so kind of the bottom part here. And then the lower part of the lines, if you can do that. And again, not worrying too much about being exact, just, this is just a sketch. And then clean off your brush. Let this dry and move on to step seven. Step seven, add ink lines. So you want to start with the smallest micron, the 005. It has the smallest tip. 
and then you just want to go throughout and redraw all the lines and you can refer to your final reference image if you can't see those lines and you can also refer to your transfer image if you need to and you should be able to see at least the ones in the yellow areas and you can redefine so if the paint went outside of the lines you can redraw so like on this leaf here it went out a little bit so I'm going to redefine those edges based on where the paint landed and you don't have to do that so in an area where the paint went outside you can just leave it on the outside edges too like that leaf or maybe even here on this flower petal so there's a little bit of paint on the outside it still looks great it just has that sketchy kind of look to it so go ahead and go throughout and redraw all those lines Again, don't worry too much about being exact. And if you think you make any mistakes, it's okay. This is just a sketch. This makes it perfectly imperfect. Next, you'll want to use the Owen Black Micra to thicken up the scientific name a little. And then you'll also want to use it to thicken these petals in the bud, some of these inner bud lines, the upper bud stem lines, and the stamen like you see in your final reference image and your step seven, eight image. You can also go ahead and thicken up anything else that you feel needs this kind of medium thick line. Lastly, you wanna use the 08 Black Micron to just thicken up some of the lines, so the bottom stem lines on the buds and the bottom stems and leaves, these little leaflets, kind of the bottom area of the buds, some of the inner petal outlines, the inner center area of the stamen, and the lower outer half uh, the anthers here and you can refer to 7b and your final reference image for that placement be careful because this pen does tend to smudge while it's wet the line variation so the variation and from thick to thin really makes the image pop and look more three-dimensional. I'm all done. I like where this is at. And I did notice I left out this leaf here. And like I said, every time I paint, my painting turns out a little bit different. I like the way it is. So I'm gonna leave it just like that. We're done, great job. You've created a unique painting that only you could do. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun creating your painting, had a chance to relax a little. Next, you have some options what to do with this painting. You can punch holes in it and add it to your sketchbook. You can frame it, gift it, send it in the mail as a postcard. And also please make sure to share it on our Facebook fan art page. And if you'd like to have it shared on our social media, go ahead and tag it with the hashtag NatureCreateArt. Check out NatureSketchCreate.com for future lesson crates and sign up for our newsletter for regular updates.